I'm here with Jason Misaki, who is the wildlife biologist with DLNR in Hawaii. Thank you for joining us. You have quite a responsibility as a wildlife biologist. Maybe you could share a little bit about how does this place also fit into your work? The program that I manage is, is tasked to manage the wildlife resources, especially the native resources within the state. And we do that by designating wildlife sanctuaries, providing habitats, protecting the species so that they're able to thrive. Places like this falls into the bigger picture of creating and maintaining populations throughout the island so that we can slowly expand the recovery uh, of these species. Well, and we were talking a little bit earlier about you growing up on Molokai. <laughs> did that prepare you for this job that you have? It did prepare me, and I didn't realize that until I got into this job. Um, you know, growing up, being outdoors all the time, my, my dad was in conservation, so he had a lot of influence on it. Um, you know, going hunting, going fishing. It really did prepare me, and I didn't realize it until I got into this field and I got into this job, and I said, oh, I, this is all the stuff that I do for fun, and now I get paid to do it. I get to run around. In, in these nice these areas, you know, looking at animals and plants and trying to make sure that I understand them. And so, yeah, I, I feel very prepared for this. And being outside, right? What a, what a wonderful job that is, <laughs> to yeah. be in the fresh air. Oh, I, yeah, that's, that's one of the biggest perks about the job. Does your designation, or is the area designated to DLNR and your responsibility also include the Northern Hawaiian Islands? We have Kure Atoll, which is the northwesternmost atoll within the Papahanaumokuakea National Marine Monument. And that is also an example of how the space between the places that we're managing is important because everything is so spread out. We want to make ensure that we have consistent management practices to ensure that the species are able to move in between the areas that we are managing and areas that are outside of it that are also being managed. And how does climate change and the reality of weather patterns being different now and currents and temperatures, how does that impact your job? We have to be aware of it. We manage coastal areas and coastal lands. We manage wetlands, which potentially could serve a big part in the potential climate change. What we try to make sure is we have a solid foundation for how we manage the land and how we manage the species. And hopefully the decisions that we're making, the way that we're managing the lands, are able to withstand whatever changes happen in the future with climate change or, or with anything. And so how are you addressing when people get a little bit animated, shall we say, you know, about climate change or about the changes here in Hawaii. Everything changes, that's part of life. How, from your perspective, how do you handle that? You know, when I hear them talk about climate change, it's a, it's a long, drawn-out process. And when I look at the, the goals that we have for now and even in the near future for when I'll be around, I, I don't think it'll change a whole lot in terms of what we're doing. I want in to be aware of, of it. what the department is planning and implementing? I definitely think they're aware of what's happening and there's programs being involved in it. A lot of it is to adjust some of the, f the fundamental things that we're doing as far as wetland management, as far as um, fortifying coastlines and, and areas around there to make sure that we're not creating habitats that could potentially be gone um, in the future. So a lot of that future planning, being more strategic in realizing that things are going to change is, is sort of where the, the department is on that. What is one challenge that you most recently got through? Let's put it that way. <laughs> Since, since I've been managing um, the lands, especially within culinary marsh, is the level of public interest that, that we're hearing. You know, maybe that hasn't changed, but we're able to get a lot more feedback from the public with social media, with different outlets that, that are out there. So we get to, to hear what people um, think is good, what people think is bad, and what people want to see changed. And part of our, our job and our duties is to take that into account in the decisions that we're making because we're managing this land and we're managing this resource for the benefit of the public. So that is a huge undertaking. We get a lot of positive feedback on, on the work that we're doing for endangered species within wetlands. And it must be rewarding when you do, we are able to have that conversation with the public. Yeah, and we try to ensure that when we provide feedback and answer questions. It's based on information that we're gathering on the site. We're making a decision based on what the biological resources and the monitoring is telling us. And, and ultimately, that's the foundation that we need to build in order to say that we want to move forward in this process, and this is why, and that's the driver for, for the decision that we make. Well, thank you for spending a few minutes with us. Appreciate meeting you. Thank you. We've just had the opportunity to listen to my conversation with Jason Misaki, who is the wildlife biologist with the DLNR here in Hawaii. Mahalo.